It's 9.30 in the morning, and Tony is already starting his day as productively as possible by exercising and having a good homemade breakfast. Meanwhile, his best friend Paul is depending on an app to wake him up and remind him of everything he is on today's schedule. Today is a special day because they'll be presenting their app idea to a team scouting for famous IT genius David Zuckerman, but arriving late means there's a line of over 500 people. While waiting, they meet a group of minimalists that live with only 100 things and their app idea is software that helps you get rid of unnecessary stuff. Many hours later, Tony and Paul get to pitch their app to the team and Zuckerman, who is watching through a camera. Paul thinks that phones shouldn't all have the same voice, so he's programmed Nana, a software that recognizes the emotion in your voice and adopts a personality according to your needs. If they connect this idea to Zuckerman's database, the possibilities are endless, like offering company for the elderly or counseling for those with bad mental health. Unfortunately, the team isn't impressed by an idea that is just making people happy, inspiring Tony to take a risk and reveal some extra programming he did behind Paul's back. During the trial, the app has been tracking Paul's routes, tastes, and expenses to understand his personality, which means it also knows exactly what to sell to him, and it works, because Paul has been buying it all. Paul is furious because now he looks like a shopaholic idiot, but Tony's idea pays off, Zuckerman calls and offers 4 million euros for the app, and promises to meet the guys in a few weeks. Afterward, Paul and Tony go to a bar to celebrate the deal with the rest of the employees of their IT startup. Tony tries to give a speech, but Paul's still angry so he keeps interrupting with embarrassing facts about Tony's childhood. They begin arguing and end up making a bet, they have to live 100 days without their belongings, only getting back one item per day. Whoever gives up first leaves half his shares to the entire staff. All the drinking makes them pass out, and in the morning, they find themselves wearing nothing inside their empty apartments. Co-workers Ronnie and Betty come over to tell them everyone has chipped in to pay the rent for 100 days and to bring the rules written down to avoid confusion. They can pick up their next item at midnight, and stuff like socks and shoes can count as one. They can get food at the office during the week and Betty has brought weekend rations, their credit cards and money are inside a box, and if they open it they lose. The guys wait until midnight to run out of their apartments, dealing with the cold weather without any clothes on. When they reach the storehouse, Tony chooses a sleeping bag and Paul chooses a long coat, so Tony has to stop him from smuggling a bunch of things under it. While they argue, a woman named Lucy comes out from another storage room wearing a pompous dress. She takes Paul's phone, makes a call, then gives it back before returning to her own place without explaining anything. The next day, they're visited by Paul's parents Wolfgang and Renata, who were worried because Paul didn't answer his phone. Renata informs them she and Wolfgang will leave on a trip soon, so Paul should keep an eye on his grandmother. She asks Tony to go too, because he lived with them for many years and that makes him family. When they go back to work, Paul and Tony eat as much as possible from the fridge and use whatever they can find in the bathrooms to wash up. For the first few days, they choose clothing as their items to look presentable in public, but Tony also chooses a mattress while Paul picks up his phone. However the phone runs out of battery, so he can't use it until he returns to the office and borrows someone's charger. One afternoon, the guys finally go to check on Grandma Oma. While helping with the chores, they remember their childhood together, and Paul shows how bitter he is that Tony would always get the better gifts and most of the family's attention. Tony also stole his school girlfriend Anna, and Paul thinks it's because Tony can't get a woman with character on his own. Later at midnight, when they go to the storehouse for their next items, Lucy visits them again. Tony takes the chance to ask her out on a date just to prove he can get a woman with character, and Lucy accepts. Things don't get easier as days pass. Paul runs out of data on his phone and can't access the internet anymore, so he uses Wi-Fi at the office to talk to Nana again. He looks at all the purchases he made before the bed and wonders why he buys this much if he doesn't need those things, and Nana explains that buying makes him happy. Tony bribes Betty to gift him some ingredients for his date and has to swap his pants for sunglasses after his eyes get irritated because he hasn't changed his contacts since the bet started. Lucy comes to Tony's place for the date and tries to be nice, but the food sucks because of the lack of ingredients and they drink wine from the same cup they put the flowers in. To make matters worse, their bonding is interrupted multiple times. First by Tony's eyes, which start excreting a sticky yellow liquid because of the irritation. Lucy helps him clean them up by using tea bags she got at the gas station, and the two of them kiss. The next interruption comes from Paul, who is going through an existential crisis after realizing he isn't happy and that's why he buys so much stuff. When Lucy goes to the bathroom, Tony stops playing nice and kicks Paul out, explaining he almost got to the finishing line with his chick. Lucy hears this and accepts to spend the night with him. The following day, Paul visits Oma, who is looking for a briefcase with all the things she had with her when she escaped a refugee camp. A picture of her shows her to be very happy because back then, surviving was enough. This makes Paul cry because he has so many more things and comforts than his granny during the war, yet he can't be happy. Later in the evening, Tony visits Lucy at the storehouse and they spend the night together again. Tony confesses he wishes to see Lucy more often and she accepts under two conditions. What happens in the storehouse stays in the storehouse, and Tony won't seek her out the rest of the day. 
The morning of the big meeting finally arrives and Zuckerman himself comes to the office to discuss the deal. Zuckerman is ready to buy the app, but Tony has a plan. He lies and says that since Zuckerman became interested, so has Google, and they're offering 14 million euros for the whole company. Zuckerman agrees to match that price and the deal is sealed. After the meeting, Tony celebrates this accomplishment, but Paul is furious about all this business manipulation because his app was supposed to help people. After exchanging a few slaps, Paul decides to go all out, there are only 20 days left, so he's betting all his shares on Tony losing, but from now on, no more cheating or using things from the office. Paul gets angry again when he discovers that Ronnie had installed hidden cameras in his apartment to be sure he wasn't cheating yet he didn't do the same for Tony. While at the office, Paul gets a call from his mother to let him that Oma has been in the hospital the past few days and he's only learning about it now because of his lack of phone. Oma got hurt after a fall, so Renata has decided to send her to a nursing home because she can't live alone anymore. Renata also informs Paul that Oma wants him to choose something from her apartment to keep, but he can't because of the rules. Later, Paul steals some flowers and goes to the hospital. But instead of visiting Oma, he gets distracted when he sees Lucy enter the psychosomatic medicine building. He waits for her outside until she's done, and while Lucy isn't happy to be found out, she shares her story, she's a shopaholic, and this addiction has destroyed her life. She also asks Paul not to tell Tony, and he promises he won't. Later at midnight, Paul slips and accidentally tells Tony that Lucy isn't coming to the storehouse today. Tony pushes for an explanation, saying it's really important for him, so Paul calls him out for using that pronoun and points out Tony doesn't really know anything about Lucy. Paul thinks Tony is too perfect and doesn't need anyone, thus he should let Lucy go. After Paul leaves, Tony decides to wait for Lucy anyway, and the two of them spend the night together as usual. Meanwhile, Paul looks for the good food that restaurants throw out at the end of the day. Zuckerman finds him there because he's been watching Paul closely, fascinated by his personality. Nana is a very simple but effective idea, it's cute and innocent, which makes it the perfect weapon, Paul has effectively turned a little machine into a person, and this person can sell whatever they want to the users because they forget it's a thing. Zuckerman wants Paul to work for him and gives him a first-class ticket to California to think about it. Tony tries to follow Lucy when she leaves the storehouse, but she notices him and breaks up with him for breaking the rules. The following night, Tony returns to the storehouse and finds Lucy's space empty because it was seized by the government. Paul explains she was drowning in debt, which makes Tony believe he was the one to rat her out and he punches him for it. This is the wake-up call Paul needed to understand they were never best friends, just two guys that have known each other for a long time. Paul gives up and tells Tony to keep the money before returning to his apartment, where he finds a crying Renata that tells him Oma died. As he begins crying, Paul realizes he never visited Oma at the hospital because of the stupid bet. Meanwhile, Tony remembers the night Lucy used Paul's phone, so he steals it from the office to dial the number she had used. It takes him to her voicemail where Lucy introduces herself with her full name, and now Paul can search that name on the town's public address book to find her. After visiting a bunch of wrong Lucys, he finally finds her as living in a tiny apartment. Lucy explains Paul didn't rat on her, she turned herself in to make progress with her life. Wanting to help, Tony offers to pay for her debt, but this makes Lucy angry. He can't just solve her problems with money, she's still an addict going through a hard time and refuses to be some rich boy's project. Tony returns home and tries to apologize to Paul, but he isn't in his apartment, and nobody at the office has seen him there either. Tony decides to visit Renata, and he's devastated to learn about Oma's death. Renata also informs him that Paul has left for California. Not wanting to believe it, Tony checks the apartment, only to find them empty. While thinking of what to do, he bumps into one of the neighbors, who complains about Paul's car leaving a trail of oil on the street. It turns out Paul hasn't gone to California, he's been living in his car near a lake. Tony follows the trail of oil to find him and apologizes for having been a twat. This isn't enough for Paul though, he wants Tony to admit all the mistakes he's made. The list seems to go on forever and there comes a point where Tony doesn't know what else to apologize for. Frustrated, Paul tackles Tony into the mud and demands an apology for Anna, because Tony never actually liked her and only stole her from Paul to hurt him. Tony finally admits it's true, he wanted to ruin it because he was jealous, Paul had a whole family supporting him plus a warm home, while Tony was alone munching from someone else. Paul understands Tony had been a kid in need of support too and finally forgives him. Afterward, Tony surprises Paul with an item from Oma's collection. He bought it back from a pawn shop, which means he's lost the bet because he bought something. The guys return to the office and explain they've both lost, so they'll be dividing the app money equally with everyone. They also explain they'll be using their money to buy land and start a new place where money doesn't matter. However their speech is interrupted when everyone gets a notification on their phones, Zuckerman has used the guy's demo to release Nana on his own. This little company doesn't have the legal power to sue him, and everyone leaves the office with as much as they can carry. Only Paul and Tony are left behind, and while they're happy they still have each other, Tony wishes he still had Lucy as well because he truly loves her. Seeing it's real this time, Paul comes up with a plan to help. The next day, Lucy leaves her apartment and finds a trail of objects that she follows until she finds Paul standing with no clothes in the middle of a field. 
He begins describing all the ways in which he isn't perfect, pointing out he wants to commit to her so they can be broken together. There are four things on the ground next to him, and he explains these are the five things he can't live without. Lucy realizes she's the fifth, and while she considers the line cheesy, she kisses Tony anyway. A few days later, the guys and Lucy go out on a road trip with only the minimum needed objects. Paul confesses he has a plan to get back at Zuckerman because that's his app on everyone's phone so he still has access to it, the idea is to make Nana tell the whole world that Zuckerman is collecting their data and finally set them free from their phones. The best part is, Zuckerman won't be able to deny it because then he'd have to admit he stole the app, so his reputation is ruined either way. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.